I hate making my own loop filters in Last Epoch, and I think a lot of other people do too, since I get asked about it a lot. And the reason I hate it is because there's so many different variables and you have to do everything for every item slot and get the right bases and this and that and the other thing. And it takes so long. When I made my first loop filter, it took me hours. And then I got a little faster and a little faster, but it was still very annoying. And I decided, wait a minute, what if I just didn't care about that? So today I'm gonna to be talking about how I make loop filters very quickly and efficiently for my characters when I don't plan to farm for upgrades for other things, or I'm not a member of a Merchant's Guild. So if you're a Merchant's Guild enjoyer, uh, I'm sorry this won't necessarily help you as you have to take into account the economy, but if you're just looking for, all right, what things on the ground can I click to hopefully get an upgrade, then you've come to the right place. And hopefully the whole process should take 10 minutes or less. I'll start by going over it, making one from scratch. Then I'll take you into the fully built filter, talk about a few of the reasons why the rules are there. Okay, so here we have a bunch of random loot on the ground, including a quiver that I dropped, just so that there's a unique item visible. And you wanna filter it. I mean, which of these things are upgrades? First thing to do is hit Shift plus F, and then create a loot filter. Create a new filter. Your new filter is going to be called whatever your build is. So let's say Dive Bomb Falconer 1.0. Enter a description. This is a test loot filter made for an example. And now I've added a filter. Nothing has changed though, because there's no rules. First thing is I want to hide things that are never going to be an upgrade. Doesn't matter what I do, that sun spear never going to be an upgrade for me. So I go to hide, add condition. Let's see, item rarity, normal, magic, rare. All those things, all normal items, all magic items, and all rare items at my current point in progress are not upgrades. If you're still lower level, you might want to leave some of these unchecked. Like in Act 1, even a magic item can be a good upgrade. On a good base, even a normal item can be a good upgrade. But then, as you progress, as you get into the end game, as you start wearing all Exalted, well, you need Exalted to be an upgrade. Also, I don't need any set items, so I'm going to disable those entirely. Then I hit Update. And oh look, all the loot on the floor disappeared. Now that you've done the first hide, you can do the second hide. You can hide idols, you can hide idols for other classes, that's kind of up to you. So for example, I could do hide, and I could do class requirement. Primalist, mage, sentinel, acolyte. There we go. All of the class specific items that are not from my class are now hidden. Optionally, maybe you say, well, I might play a Sentinel later. I want to see the good stuff. Well, you can keep that rule off or just not make it entirely. Next rule. This is one of the two show rules that are going to be added. So that's show rule one and show rule two. It's going to be a recolor. Pick whatever your favorite color is here. In this case, I'm going to go with a nice blue. And I'm also going to rename it here. Let's go in here, add a condition of item affix, edit rule name, shards. So this is specifically things where I need crafting shards. But how do I know which shards I need? Well, I'd come here or here and look at my crafting materials. It's up here or over here, whichever you prefer. And I say, all right. What do I need that I'm low on? Maybe it's penetration. I'm not playing a poison build or a void build. I've got fizz, but I am doing cold damage, so maybe I want cold pen. I also might want the minion pen, regular pen. I only have one of those. Then there's the hybrid minion and bow damage, which I have 21, but that's not that much. So I'm just going to go through and add in all the affixes that I think I need right now. You can always come in and change this rule later. In fact, you'll probably want to. I'm going to select advanced options. All the tiers must be more equal to two. So if there's tier two, I will get at least two affix shards. If I pull it off of a rune of removal, or I'll get up to two if I shatter it, then it's going to show up. And let's see, I don't need any attributes. Melee, well, I'm not a melee build. I'm a bow build, all right. Let's say bow attack speed, I need that. 
Crit chance and bow attack speed. That's a pretty rare hybrid mod. Yep, I'll include that. Maybe for damage types, pen. So I can just type pen and it shows up right here. Fizz pen, cold pen, cold pen, fizz pen. Put all those in. I don't need any class specific things for other classes, but I might need some rogue ones. First though, we're gonna come to health. Hybrid health's really good. Uh, potion, maybe I need some ward and ailment cleanse. Don't have enough of those shards. Maybe on here, resistance and armor. There's absolutely nothing I need. So I just don't highlight anything. Remember, if you're not happy to pick that item up and shatter it, it shouldn't be on this list. Crit avoid, you know what? Maybe I need crit avoid. Let's add that in. Movement, maybe I need movement speed. Minion, there we go. Minion, melee, and bow damage. Then rogue shards. Again, it's really gonna depend on your build, but whatever you need from this list. So level of ballista. Maybe I want level of shift. I don't know. Level of explosive trap, dive bomb, falconry, all the things I'm using. Damage an area with dive bomb, hell yeah. Max ballista. I don't know, do I need a max ballista? Probably not. Can give a skip on that. If I plan to play a different build, like after this, maybe I plan to reroll to one punch cinder strike. I add that in. That's totally fine. And there we go. 18. And if I intentionally drop an item that has one of the affixes that I want, there we go. It shows up as blue. And that's how you know the filter's working. But what about upgrades? Now I'm going to do affix with at least one affix total affix tiers of more or equal to six so this is primarily aimed at exalted so remember i don't have any rare items on but if you had rare items maybe it's five maybe it's four maybe it's three you can always progressively change this as you get upgrades and now i just go through uh maybe I want exalted dexterity gear. I definitely do. I'm a deck stacking build. But I don't need anything else there. Let's see. In general, crit multi. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Increased area with area skills. Damage types. Maybe I don't really care about the regular pen, but I would care about the weapon version. So I add that in. Bow mods. Hybrid bow. Bow attack speed. Who knows? Maybe even bow damage is worth it. Let's add all of those in. Health. All of them. Any health gear is good health gear. Maybe I'm feeling like I'm missing. Hmm. Let's pick a res I'm actually missing. Okay. There's kind of a lot of them. So maybe I put in elemental, cold, poison, and void. That's the thing about doing a filter this way. It's really easy to customize it on the fly. So... Come back up to resistances. Elemental res. Poison res. Void res. And cold res. Done. Now, I don't need a lot of the other stuff here. I'll definitely take movement speed. Definitely take cooldown. And minion, minion damage. Minion melee and bow damage. Gonna take both of those. Don't care about leech. Health recovery, maybe I don't need that. Crit strike avoid, I want that. There we go. And coming down to rogue, class specific. Well, again, what am I looking for? What is valuable enough for me to put it on? Chance to shred on bow hit. All right, shred effect. Maybe I don't need the shards. I'm never gonna craft those on, but if I get T6, yeah, I'll be happy to use the item as a base. Let's see, ballista. Yes. Maybe I don't need shift. Never going to start with a shift base, but I'll craft it onto something else. And let's just say those are all the things that I'm looking for. Now I've got 25 selected. Oh, and instead of show, recolor. Make it a color if it's really important, like red. All right. So quick editor's correction here. I selected the wrong version of tier six. That was six total tiers between all mods on the item rather than a single tier six modifier. So it wasn't going to be correctly highlighting exalted only. I found this out after running through a level. All right, and now back to the original video. 
So now if I drop something with bow attack speed, oh, the rule's off. Yeah, do turn your rule on. There we go. Perfect. So that takes care of most of the items. The only things that are not accounted for here are uniques, if you want to highlight any of those specifically, and idols. So let's do idols. Add rule. Recolor. Make it add a no green. Add condition. Affix. You just pick any idol stuff that you want from the idol section. So like, I don't know. Maybe in general, I want health. Fizz res, armor. Needed cold res. Needed Ellie res. Oh, and crit chance. Yeah, crit chance. Maybe even vitality. And then shared physical damage, because that increases my minion physical. Shared cold. For rogue-specific things, again, I'm just going to look through. If I see anything that looks useful to my build, I will very much check it. Like shared crit multi. You know what? Maybe that's the only thing that's relevant. Maybe I don't need both fizz with... Actually, let's put that on too. That sounds fun. And I don't need that. I don't need that. Bow crit chance, bow damage. All right. Cool. So that's the idle rule. You can rename that. Idles. And let me drop one of these. See, it's nice and green now. Now, if you just wanted to make a quick and dirty but highly functional loot filter, you're done. Congratulations. Do be sure to reorder all your rules. Anything that is towards the top supersedes things below. So if you have specific additional rules like highlighting a certain unique or highlighting a base type, those need to go above your general rules. Similarly, if you want to hide something entirely regardless of its rarity or affixes, it needs to go above all of your show rules. But how do you filter for a base type or filter specific unique items? Let's get into that very quickly next. Then I'll show a little bit of gameplay for how the loop filter as a whole behaves. That's kind of a pain. I'm going to be honest. I would not do it unless it's super, super relevant. Because the other problem is it gets real weird when you're showing things by bases. So personally, the way I do that, if I want to rule like that, is it's exalted. And here's the problem. Let's say I do that. You have to then come into the subtypes. You know what? Let's pick a better example here. So item type, subtype of, I don't know, armor. Helmet, confirm. Rogue. Where is it? Falconry helmet. There we go. But you can't do another item type filter, at least right now. This is why I would very much only advise having one rule. Keep an eye out for one thing. Now go look. I need a falconry helmet. So... I'm going to keep an eye out for those, but don't have it for like every base type because that just gets so complicated to maintain. And if you really, really need to, you can add a rule to filter uniques. Personally, I have never actually felt the need for this rule. But just to show you how to do it, rarity, unique, then add condition, item type. Like let's say you really, really wanted just to see unique bows, make them super shiny. There we go. Oh, that's a quiver. Let's fix that. Unique offhands, quiver. There you go. And you could even filter by a specific type. So if you're looking for arrow guard, yes, you can actually filter for that. Whatever the arrow guard is, that's what you'd want here. Don't know what type it is. Let's find out. It is a unique heavy quiver. So we do this, do that, confirm. And then we do heavy quiver. Now the arrow guard shows up, but if you drop a different unique, which I definitely did not prepare ahead of time, here we go. Now it shows up normal. 
Much like with the highlight for a specific base, I really recommend only doing one of these at a time and sticking to whatever you're target farming, because otherwise it just gets to be way too much work. And so that has been my relatively quick guide on putting together a filter that's easy to use and easy to maintain. I'm pretty sure this is how I'm going to make all of my filters going forward, but I'm probably not going to do the last two rules. To be honest with you, I don't really need these. It's probably just going to be these. And you know what? Maybe I don't even hide everything. Maybe I just let the Exalteds and the Uniques go through and pick them up for later characters. And so there you go. Exalted items are visible. The ones you'll want to pick up are highlighted. There's some blue things to shard and you'll even highlight good idols. This is generally a really good middle ground for when you want to loot filter on a specific class without worrying about gear for other builds or alts. I know the video up until this point took about 15 minutes, but to be honest with you, I do think it'll take you about 10 when you're just making the filter rather than explaining it. And so now let's head over into an echo and do a little bit of blasting. You'll see various items appearing on the ground as I go. Now this is when the filter was a little overtuned and I accidentally had six total tiers rather than tier six mods. So the loot's not going to be quite this plentiful most of the time, but the slightly more plentiful version does do a really good job of demonstrating exactly when things show up, what they look like and all that. There's a few things on the ground that I'm just completely ignoring because I can see at a glance, all right, well, I'm not too interested in that personally. It's not anything special, but if I ever wanted to stop, maybe I happen to need LP fodder and I didn't really want to make a rule for it. It's not too bad to go and pick up the exalted. Similarly, as you get later into the game, the goal is to turn off mods or turn off rules entirely. If I no longer need idols, then I can turn off the idol rule entirely. If I don't need certain shards, I can turn those off. If I happen to need a different shard, I can turn that on. This filter is set up in such a way that it's extremely flexible. That way you don't have to worry too, too much about making a catch-all filter because you just make adjustments on the fly. And I have to say, I really didn't mind this. In the past, I've kind of dreaded making loop filters. Now I'm definitely gonna do it more often. But the downside is if you ask for my loop filter, you're going to get this video instead because my loop filter is literally tuned for my character and the specific things I'm wearing. And it won't really work very well with yours. But what you can do is go down to the description, take the example filter I made, tweak it for your own setup, and you'll be good to go. In general, for the campaign, this strategy also does work. You just have to be way, way more general. To the point where early in the campaign, you probably don't want any hide rules at all, and you slowly turn them on as you go through the chapters. But with that said, I'm curious. What are your thoughts on this loot filter? Do you prefer the catch-all approach that's really difficult and annoying to maintain, even if it means that I'm not going to do it and you're probably not going to do it either? Or do you prefer this new version of a loot filter, which is kind of lazy man mode? It's really easy, gets 99% of the way there, and looks pretty good doing it. Now, if you're looking for more information on loot filters, that'll be up in the card and down below. On the other hand, if you're curious about my build, that video will be coming out soon. So be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there. And for now, I'm going to take a minute to thank my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. And I'd also like to take a minute to thank everyone who watched to the end. I hope you learned something. I'm glad you enjoyed enough to watch to the end, and I'll see you again in the next one.